Bueno, miren. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church. Are you glad you're here today? We are glad that you are here too. Welcome to this day of worship. Would you look at someone around you and tell them God loves you and so do I. We are truly excited for a wonderful day of worship on this Bicentennial Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's quieten our hearts and our minds as we prepare for worship. for every age and every stage. Let us, Let us worship, worship together, together the, the young and the old. The good news is proclaimed in God's words and also with crayons, silly songs, snacks, and rest time. Let us, Let us worship, worship together, together every generation. generation. We come together with different abilities and disabilities, learning in a rainbow of ways and styles. Let, Let us, us worship, worship together, together with, with our family, family of faith. faith. All are welcome in the arms of Christ who proclaimed, Let the children come. Let, Let us, us worship, worship together, together, united in our eternal home.
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. God, our teacher, who helps us to understand the world around us, thank you for the privilege of education. You have blessed our communities with teachers who take new skills and concepts and pass them along to each new class of young people. God, who came as a child to show us how to be fully human, to show us how to be children of God, you have given our children minds that grow and develop in unique ways, at unique speeds, and we are astounded by that miracle. You speak to us through the words, actions, play, and feelings of children. You call us to listen to the Spirit speaking through our young siblings in Christ. We celebrate the beginning of this school year and ask for your blessings upon the children the educators and the families who support them all. We come together to lift up our young people and all those who care for them and teach them. Open our hearts to what you are saying to us today. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Take a good long minute and greet those around you with signs of Christ's peace and love. Good morning, church family. 
If you are a student of any age, any grade, if you are a teacher administrator, you know what, guys, I'm going to have you all line up down here on the carpet this morning. Come line on up on both sides of me. If you need a tag still, we have some extra tags. Come on down. Come on down. Teachers. All right, I got Miss Smith here. She's ready to go to Lincoln tomorrow. Line all the way up down there. Come on down. That's half the church, Pastor. Woohoo! Come on, y'all. Come on up. Come on up so the church can see you. Stand on up. And if you need a tag, we have some extras. I love how you're bringing your loveies. Good morning, June. Come on, Cammy. Come on, Raleigh. Come on, Baker Davis. I'm glad you're here. I see you, Lily. Everybody, come on up. Yay! It's like Christmas has come early. Thank you for bringing sister. Y'all stand right here. All right. Okay, come on over. Come stand by your Miss Duclo. Come on up. There we go. Stand right by Kimmy. There we go. Ethan, come on. Come on, Elliot. Right here. You want stand with her? All righty. Well, good morning. In case you don't know me, what's my name? I'm Miss Duclo, in case you have not met me before. You want to stand right there for me, Brooks? Come on, Kimmy. Dylan, come hold my hand. Come stand with me. I'm going to need your help. Come on, Collins. You want to stand right by me? Come on, JJ. All righty. This is a wonderful group of kids. Can you believe school starts tomorrow? Everybody say, aw, but mamas, y'all cheer. Woohoo! Let's get it back in school. Woohoo! Yeah, we're doing it. Okay. So you're probably wondering did Miss Duclo bring snacks? Well, maybe. But no, we're gonna talk about going back to school. Who is excited for tomorrow? Raise your hand if you're excited. All right, does anybody? Okay, look out there, look out there. That is beautiful, that is beautiful. We want everybody. Okay, who wants to tell me one thing they're excited for about going back to school? All right, Logan, you wanna tell me? Uh, the Legos. Legos, those are, those are what we love. Who doesn't love a good Lego? Okay, Elliot. Uh, the playground at Kate Sullivan. Playground, Cammy. I like playing with my friends. Playing with our friends. Who we got back here? Come on, Jake. Hanging out with my friends. Hanging out with your friends, okay, Autumn? Um, I'd say hanging out with my friends and reading a book with them. Okay, lots. What about you? Um, going to lunch. Lunch. Yep. It's very important. All right. What about you, Cole? You got anything? Cole, de Cole doesn't want me calling him out. Well, let me get one more person down here. All right. Tell me, Hannah. Playing with my friend. All right. So we all have a lot of things, and I heard a lot of playing with our friends. I didn't hear a lot about curriculum or the new standards, but that's okay. But Miss Smith, you're excited about that, aren't you? She cannot wait. She cannot wait. But I know that there's a lot of things that go on. Can y'all come down here, teenagers? I'm going to embarrass you. We do a lot of extra things. Like, I know you play football, right? All right, so we've got football playing going on. Um, let's pretend you play soccer. I don't have a baseball. Okay. And let's see. Who likes to run? Okay, we're going to... Oh, no, not you. We're going to let you hold this one. You're a runner. Um, drumsticks, drumsticks. we got music. We've got a lot of people who like to do a lot of things. Who likes to support FSU? All right, Zach does. We'll go with that. All right. Um, ooh, this is exciting. Who likes to learn new things? Oh, I need Hold the book. Thank you, thank you. And, um, you know, we're going to be wanting to get those AR points. we got to make our AR goals. Hold those for me. Woohoo! want to make sure we do. You did? Okay, and then um, my personal favorite, when I was in school, all the things I like to, I like to do acting and dress up. Anybody want to wear my, you want to wear those? Anybody, here, put those on for me. Come on. Acting and dress up, is that not the best? Okay, that, there's no food in there, I checked. So, we have all of these wonderful things, guys, that we like to do. And we have all these wonderful opportunities, not just for learning, but our after school things that go a lot of fun and a lot of things. But what I want you to remember for this year, you have a challenge and church family I want us all to kind of take this challenge on we want to work at being 
uncommonly kind. Can everybody say that word with me? Uncommonly kind. And that means we are going to go out of our way to be the nicest kids at our schools. We are going to go out of our way so that other people say, hey, what's different about that kid? And then we can tell them, well, I'm kind because I love God. I love Jesus, and I get more information about him here at our church. So that's what I'm hoping you will all do, okay? With all your activities and all the learning, I want you to make sure you take time to be uncommonly kind. Let's say it again, uncommonly kind. And Reverend Williams is going to come. He has a special blessing to offer, so y'all get ready. You ready? Oh, and Reverend Anna Brooke, I'm sorry. Before we pray, I just wanted to let each of you know, students and teachers, how much your church loves you and how we believe here at Trinity that you are not the church of the future, you're the church in the now. We're here to support you. We are here to be your spiritual family and community. So we want to pray for you, pray over your backpacks and pray over your lives this morning. And I would ask congregation, those of you who are able and comfortable, if you would just stretch your arms forward toward these as we pray for them. Let us pray. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students and these teachers. They stand here ready to receive your blessings and they commit themselves to study and learning in the school year ahead. We ask your blessing on each of them. Further, we ask your blessing on these backpacks. They will hold the school work of each student and will be carried from home to school and back again. As these students carry these backpacks, may they be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them each school day. We pray as well for the teachers and administrators in our schools. May they also be sustained by your blessing. May they be reminded that this congregation embraces their call to teaching and learning and surrounds them with love and care as well. We pray in the name of Jesus, who we seek to follow day by day. Amen. Amen. Let's show our appreciation to these before us this morning. take the young children with me to room 205 and the older ones will join you again.
of God's children, let us pray, saying, loving God, hold us and our prayers. God of new beginnings, with you every transition and new start is a reminder of your goodness, for you are always creating fresh, amazing things in us and through us. With thanks and love, we now offer everything we are to you, asking for your blessing. Loving God, hold us and our prayers. Lord of all, we pray as and for students of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds. We pray for our hearts and all they hold, excitement and nervousness, disappointment and hope. We pray for steady self-esteem and deepening resilience. We pray for all of our minds, that they will expand in wonder and celebration, learning not just from the books studied, but the people beside us. Open our minds with a willingness to be changed in unexpected ways and settle our thought loops in peaceful places. We say a special prayer for parents as the start of a new school year is always another leap of faith. Wrap them with your reassuring love 
as they entrust their children and trust in you. We also pray for teachers, staff, and administrators. Bless these faithful servants with courage and confidence, knowing you are in their classroom with a steady hand on their shoulder. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. Source of peace, we plead for your justice to cover all the lands. Strengthen us to relieve the oppressed, to hear the groans of the needy, and to reform the abuses of this world. Help us recognize the hardness of our own hearts and deliver us from our habits that bind us to old ways of thinking. Transform our lives so that we may be your peace bringers to this world and that we together might make this world a safer place for all. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. God of healing, we pray for the health of those we love. We pray for those who carry burdens that we do not know or understand, whether that be in their body, hearts, or minds. We pray that we, as a church, will have the wisdom, strength, and grace to support these folks in their time of need. We also pray for those in our community who have gone home to you. Be with the friends and families of those who have passed during this time of grief. When sorrow darkens our lives, teach us to look to you and remember the great cloud of witnesses by whom we are encompassed. We pray for each person on our prayer list this week and for those unspoken prayer requests that we hold deeply in our hearts. Loving God, hold, hold us, us in our prayers. our prayers. Finally, Lord, we pray for our church. We pray that we will be a community that throws our doors open wide enough to receive anyone who needs human love and fellowship. We thank you that you have called us to be your people. Help us to know the greatness of our calling so that we, having one spirit of faith and love, may live in the world as witnesses to your kingdom here on earth. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. O Lord, our God, we offer these prayers with all that we are through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray in confidence and in faith. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Again, we are grateful for your presence here. If this is your first time worshiping here at Trinity United Methodist Church, you are our honored guest. All are welcome in this sacred house of worship. And as you leave, to get, leave today, our ushers have a gift for you that we would like to share with you on your journey this week. 
Following the service today is our annual ministry fair, and Moore Hall is filled with wonderful exhibits of various ministries here at the church. We want to thank Candace Duclos, our Director of Christian Education, and all of you who are ministry leaders for all of the work that you have done to prepare the ministry fair today. And we invite everyone following the service to Moore Hall to experience the ministry fair. There is a bounce house that's going to be available for children. One of your pastors will be put in a dunk tank before the day is over. And there will be lunch served for everyone. So we'd appreciate and value your coming to the ministry fair, seeing what is available, opportunities to serve, and signing up for those opportunities. There'll be someone at each table to help answer your questions. I want to make special note that Saturday, August 17th at 6 p.m., there will be a special concert here in the sanctuary uh, in honor of Bruckner. It will feature the Trinity Chancel Choir, our directors of music and organists, and Beethoven's Revenge String Quartet. So we invite you to be a part of that. Also, Lay Academy is coming up in September, and there's a QR code where you can sign up for Wednesday night opportunities. Also, we are reigniting our Acolyte ministry for the year, and there will be a training for the Acolyte ministry after the 11 a.m. service on September the 8th. That is for persons in sixth grade up through adulthood are invited to be a part of the Acolyte ministry. Uh, finally, today, there is also a QR code uh, for a Bible study in your bulletin that Reverend Opelinski is offering on social justice and the minor prophets, and that will begin Wednesday at 5.30, so we invite you to sign up and be a part of that. All of the, the excitement that you see here, all of the work that Trinity is doing locally and around the world is only made possible because of your financial investments in the life and ministry of the church. We cannot do what we do without you. We cannot do what we do without your ongoing support. So from the bottom of our hearts, as our leadership of the church, we give you thanks. We offer our gratitude, and we want you to know how special you are in making ministry happen here. As our ushers come this morning, they will be joined with some from our children's ministry. So let us give joyfully today out of the joy of our salvation.
here in Tallahassee and around the world. Amen. As you're standing, would you please join me as we pray together the prayer for illumination. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened to us the light of eternity. Enlighten our minds and kindle our hearts with the presence of your Spirit that we may hear your words of comfort and challenge in the reading of the scriptures through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. It is my joy today to introduce our bicentennial preacher for this morning, someone that many, many of you know, Reverend Dr. Mark Caldwell. I got to know Dr. Caldwell when Joy and I moved to Pembroke Pines. Florida to serve a church there, and Mark was the pastor of First United Methodist Church of Fort Lauderdale during that time, 
And Mark was such an inspiration to me after we had moved. We were a part of a small group of pastors that met together on a monthly basis. We had a large number of our district meetings at your church. And First Fort Lauderdale had a wonderful cook that Mark shared with us. And it's a joy to just know Mark's story and to have him here today. Uh, Tiffany is also here with Cooper and Parker. We would ask you to please stand this morning so we can recognize you. And the Caldwell family following the service will also be in Moore Hall, so we invite you there to greet them. Let's welcome Dr. Mark Caldwell. Well, friends, it's great to be back. I love this church. But before I talk much more about this, I want to go back to a story from years ago. I married a member of this congregation and took that Florida State College of Nursing graduate into the world with me. Actually, after we left Tallahassee, they sent us south where we have spent the remainder of our ministry south of Lake Okeechobee. So we have been far away for quite a while. But we've been back on occasion because my in-laws lived here until just a few years ago when they retired to Hiawassee, Georgia. In one of those visits, I was serving on the Board of Ordained Ministry. I was reading paperwork. There's a lot of reading when you're on the Board of Ordained Ministry. But while we were visiting the in-laws in Tallahassee, I came across one candidate whose paperwork struck me as inspirational and incredible. Came to find out that this individual was directing music at Killarne United Methodist Church. Now, Tiffany and I had plans to be here the next morning on that Sunday, but I almost skipped coming to Trinity so that I could see Matthew and Joy Williams at work leading music at Killarne. And that is a true story. I really was about to say, let's go sneak in there. This guy's paperwork is absolutely incredible, which is why temptation got a hold of me because of what I knew about him before we ever met face to face. Incredible pastor you have, incredible pastors you have had. As a matter of fact, your associate pastor that is in a place that I got to serve almost 30 years ago is the daughter of a childhood friend of mine. Brett Opelinski and I literally had sleepovers and we traded baseball cards. We had a blast together in elementary school. He would eventually be appointed to Fort Lauderdale and I was downtown. They were several miles to the north in the suburbs, but I got to see Anna Brooke there in Christ Church United Methodist. And what a gift it was for me to be able to see uh, uh, all of the Opelinski family as their family has grown. It's just a real joy for me to know that I'm back home amongst a lot of great people and that your leadership is solid and strong and appreciated by many, including me. For those of you who might not know me, my name is Mark Caldwell. I was here for the 175th anniversary celebration as an associate pastor. I was a graduate of Duke University Divinity School where I showed up in many ways under the command of Jesus, where they were able to hear the command that they were to go on their mission and as they went on their mission that out of Luke 9 it said he told them take nothing for your journey no staff no bag no bread no money or no extra shirt I literally showed up here from my dormitory at Duke with nothing <laughs> nothing except for a little bookcase that I had shipped from Durham North Carolina people actually laughed at my worldly possessions but I was a single man who was living as a resident advisor in my seminary days at Duke. I was able to have my time with this congregation getting to see the many individuals that were there. One of those individuals was a recent nursing graduate that I had been told I needed to meet. Well, when I finally met Tiffany, she and I played phone tag. Uh, one Sunday evening, we were going to go out and get some some dinner out somewhere. I was new, I didn't know what was out there. She said, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, call you, we'll get some, some dinner somewhere. Well, we played phone tag, never got connected, and I thought, well, she's not gonna be able to make dinner. So I started boiling a pot of Kraft macaroni and cheese, deluxe, 
So that is where I was making the good stuff. And she actually came over and knocked on the door. She was like, well, I thought we would go out. And I was halfway through boiling a pot of macaroni. I, she saw me trying to make my craft macaroni and cheese without a colander. And as I'm dumping the, the noodles out through the lid, uh, something gave and the noodles left. And she said, this man's going to need help. So she agreed to marry me. And I am uh, glad to say that we have come back to a place that really is like being at home. Uh, I will say one more thing, and that is that I, I've heard that there is still scuttlebutt of me preaching what could be the shortest sermon ever in the 200 years of the existence of this congregation. And I think that there was the very first Sunday that Dr. Horton went on vacation. He left me in charge. I preached what I guess was a very expedited service, uh, leading the worship and preaching the sermon, but the 8.30 service got out at like 9.05. And... <laughs> I noticed that you canceled your 8.30 service for this very occasion. <laughs> but I'm here to say that I've come to reclaim those 15 minutes that I didn't use on that day 20 some odd years ago. This church has done a lot for me and I do want to tell you that my talk today isn't about Mark Caldwell. And it's not just about the clergy and the staff and the congregation of this church, but at its core, it gets back to Jesus. I showed up as a green seminary graduate. I had actually, just a few months earlier, in one of my favorite classes, I don't know why it was polity, I guess I like learning the rules and regulations of the denomination. Some of my classmates were getting calls to return to their annual conferences to start serving in ministry. People were talking about these cities where they were going. I was anticipating that I would end up somewhere in central Florida, which was home for me. Many of these appointments were close to where these graduates were coming from. And I thought, well, Florida has largely kept to some of that understanding of let's not put people too far from their place that they would be comfortable. Well, I finished up a class one particular day. I went home and a few hours later got a call from a stranger named J.C. Powell. Introduced himself as the district superintendent of the Northeast District. And he only had two questions. How would you feel about being a Seminole? And how do you feel about contemporary worship? Now I have to tell you, while I was thinking about where I might be getting a call, I was thinking about Central Florida, but my mind started wandering to a pastor that I had from my childhood, about the age of many of these students that were just in front of us. I don't anticipate that there are many of the children that have their backpacks with them that are listening to me right now because I didn't do that as a child. I counted the ceiling tiles at First United Methodist Church as a six-year-old when David Horton was preaching, but I had heard that David Horton had wound up in Tallahassee, and for a moment in my favorite class, I started thinking about this pastor of mine from years ago. He's in Tallahassee, and boy, what would Tallahassee be like? Never spent much time up north of Florida. It's always been central Florida. And I went into something that I could only call a minor days. And this daydream was brought into fruition when I got those two questions. How would you feel about being a Seminole and how would you feel about doing contemporary worship? I had one question. I said, who's the pastor at this church? J.C. Powell said, it's David Horton. And I said, you're not going to believe this. But just three hours ago, I was in my favorite class and I started thinking about someone I hadn't thought about in truly decades. And it was David Horton. He said, well then, I think that maybe we have an understanding that this is a call that you can accept. I said, absolutely. And at the time I thought, you know, that's odd. But I've come to reframe that phrase with saying, no, that's God. So many times when we look at these little coincidences in life, it's not coincidence. It's not an anomaly. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And as I think back to almost 30 years ago where I was showing up as a green, green, green pastor, this congregation did some things for me. I was introduced to some great clergy. One of them was John Fletcher, an individual who was working on the, the, the task force with these individuals saying, we want to serve unmet needs, so we're going to create a sun service. It's going to be a contemporary expression of modern worship put it in Moore Hall. And I got to see that even in retirement, P. 
people can still have a lot to offer. And he, with a lot of members of this church, had been working for well over a year to set up this iteration of worship that's still going strong today. I got two years with David Horton as a senior pastor. Some great tales, some great wisdom. Mark, never go it alone. Always take a committee with you. <laughs> you know, if you're not smart enough to put people on the staff parish that like you, you're not smart enough to be in the ministry. <laughs> I listened to everything you said. In his retirement, I was blessed with a new pastor, John Willis, who came with a different, different perspective of leadership. He showed me that you can bring clever ideas and that, yes, you could even bring wonderful props into your pulpit and to have fun with the way that you lead your church. And that's why I brought in my backpack today, because I heard it was the blessing of the backpacks. And I've been able to take things that I had in my three years at Trinity and in Tallahassee that have served me well through ministry. Now, I want to do one thing. I know some of you students went back to sit with your families. Most of them left. Some of you went back to your seats, and you probably have your backpack. Now, now you're listening to the preacher. I think some of you, if you brought your backpack, I want you to open it and see if you can hold something up that you've already put in there. Go ahead. You can just unzip it. Come on. You guys have some of your things there. And just hold up maybe the coolest thing you've got in there. It might be the unused crayons. Boy, they're going to be worked to a nub in about three weeks. Uh, what is that, a report card already? All right. We've already got a falsified report card back there. All A's. That looks good. All right. Calculator. Boy, a scientific calculator. Hold on to that. Looks expensive. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, these backpacks, you pack them with things that you need, but you also pack them with things that you want. And so some of these things probably have little toys in them. Some of them have the necessities, but also the little luxuries, the fun things, the cool things. And you guys helped put a lot of that into my pack. I talked about some of the clergy, what they put into my pack. But I also realized that in my years here, I had this church that demonstrated to me what it was to pack a pack full of the fruits of the Spirit, love and joy peace and patience, kindness and goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. I was able to see a church that was able to do ministry well through the generations by the offspring that were coming back to live in the life of this community of faith. Even coming back, seeing the faces of so many cherished individuals, it makes me realize that this is a church filled with steadfast people. And while pastors can change, and politics can change, and the world can change, there are a lot of you who still show up and say, we are going to be in church. We're going to be serving the Lord. And you have done this, which has been an inspiration to many. And frankly, I've needed to lean back on those fruits in the decades of ministry that have taken me from Trinity United Methodist Church south to Miami Lakes United Methodist Church, where I served for six years. It was there that Tiffany and I welcomed Cooper and Parker into the world, and she wanted to step out of work for a little season so she could raise the twins. We put in for a move. We were moved to downtown Fort Lauderdale, First United Methodist Church there, a church that was very similar to this one, historic. It had all the challenges of downtown. One big difference is that, that church was on the verge of closure. It was so bad financially and with the morale of individual after several years of unfortunate circumstances that I had boxes that I showed up with there that I didn't even unpack. That's how close to closure that church was. But God started doing things. And I leaned on the backpack of things that I had been shown through the years, which is we can learn how to live with hope and optimism joy and creativity. We actually had uh, a few elements that were really neat elements. One of them was a seminarian who was getting ready to graduate from seminary and boy I really wanted to keep this particular pastor to keep doing ministry in Fort Lauderdale because God was doing some neat things there. So we actually were able to get the church into an administrative footing where financially we could open up an associate pastor position. 
and we put in to have this pastor return to his home of Fort Lauderdale. And when the news came that we were not going to be able to keep that particular pastor in Fort Lauderdale, Tony Foch told me that he was going to Trinity United Methodist Church as an associate. I said, there's only one appointment in this entire state where they could have sent you where I wouldn't be mad at that appointment. <laughs> and it was at Trinity. Because I knew what he was going to get into. And while I think about what God has done through the generations, I, I also think that there are some, some things that continue to bless me and that is what you have modeled in so many ways. We have had an incredible staff, many individuals that are here in the church that, that demonstrated that this is a church that knows how to do things well. And after having gone from some of these appointments after Fort Lauderdale, God did an incredible thing. And after nine years, we went to a, another church that was in distress up in Palm Beach County, Wellington, Florida horse country, suburbs of Palm Beach County. And there was a crisis going on there that we showed up to. At the time, though, I, I was able to see that in the crisis, there were people who did things well and people who could have done things better. But this is where you start seeing people in a church that say, we're going to love each other through times of tension. We are going to be people who can do things with an understanding of people that are different from us. Where did I get some of these tools from? From a church that was seated in the capital of Florida, where I realized that there were individuals that ran the gamut of politics and theology, some left, some right, individuals that said we can still be in a church and love each other, even if we're different. And I've been able to take that tool with me through the years and to find ways to bring people together, and to find that there are certainly things that we can agree upon. And quite frankly, when we talk about the Lordship of Jesus, that's a pretty easy one for every church to focus on. I've been given that gift, and I'm glad that we can continue to come and see that gift at work. One of the places that became near and dear to my heart, and I think it's fitting that we had the blessing of not only the students, but the teachers today. I've been blessed to have congregations with preschools in all of my appointments. And that was where I saw that it was a wonderful door to lead people into the life of the church, particularly those that have kind of gotten out of college and into life. They start having children and think, man, at some point we were supposed to re-engage church. Sometimes they show up and think, I was baptized as a baby and we've got this toddler that we've now enrolled in a preschool and a newborn on the way. We're, we're not baptizing our children. I've taken that opportunity to greet incoming parents of the preschools where I've served actually became an inspiration for me as I looked at kind of sharpening my blades after decades of ministry to say maybe I need to go back to school and I entered into a program where I got a doctorate of ministry and I focused on cultures of intentional connection churches and schools that were aligned to do ministry well together and unfortunately there are some that don't quite do things well together but there were some that were led me to a program that was in North Naples. A pastor had been there for 20 some odd years. His wife was an educator. They were on a campus that had a preschool that was busting at the seams and a children's ministry that was thriving, but they were just out of space. And people were asking the question, maybe we can move this preschool into a, a grade school. So they started investigating how they could open up the grades. And in 2000, they purchased land that would accommodate a school. Well, as the school grew, they thought they would have just a, an elementary school, a lower school. But some started asking the question about a middle school and then a high school. The year that I was appointed to North Naples was, of course, uh, uh, a time that was memorable for all because I showed up to North Naples United Methodist in the summer of 2019, a time when COVID would shut things down, the world would start getting polarized in many ways, and in some ways, we're still living in a state of, of difference and polarization. But because of many of the things that I learned here, I said, I want to be one who continues to hear the voice of people that are different from me, and I want to be in a church that does the same. We've had the opportunity to have a ministry that is a school, and 
While in a preschool, you're dealing with little problems like the child who bites another child, well, middle school and high school opens up a whole different set of challenges with what happens throughout the week on a campus. But it's a blessing to know that we can minister to the students of the village school, but also to be in ministry to all the schools in that region that we can possibly touch. I've been able to see how this has been a church that has lifted up education. It's been a blessing in many different ways. And these are some of the things that you help to put into my pack. Looking at what, what, what Matthew said about the hospitality, this is a church that fellowships so well. We loved our dinners. And when we were in Fort Lauderdale, part of what we were doing with a struggling church trying to find its identity was getting hospitality up and running. And that was a fruit of what happened that he got to experience. But where did I get a lot of this idea? Trinity. And I can't tell you how much this church has meant to me, to us. I realize that we are in one hall. Some of you, I think, would uh, be worshiping downstairs if that was an option. Some of you would have been here earlier in the morning if that was an option. I know that there are some of you that are here because of some developments that have recently happened, but I still have to honor the connection because I think that there are more than a fair number of you that are here from Killarney. A church that has been near and dear to my heart because the founding pastor of that was David Brazelton. And his son, Stephen Brazelton, was my best friend in middle school when David was appointed to Lakeland, Florida. On the weekend that Tiffany and I got married, we didn't honeymoon until about a week later. But it was that Sunday morning after our wedding. We knew we had family downtown. We had friends in various hotels. And we had a sweet little church that was going to be getting together to worship. And while we were exhausted after having a night that was uh, really, it was a, just a very full day. I looked at her, I said, I don't want to do that again. She said, me either. I said, so let's stick together. I don't want to get married again. That was, a, <laughs> that was a hectic day with a lot of activity. We were exhausted, but it was a beautiful, blessed day. And we just wanted to go to church. We knew that we'd get scolded if we came to Trinity, so we slipped into Killar and got to worship because our parsonage was right there. And and that's why I say it all comes back to Jesus, because there are people that do things well in the name of Christ. And this church has been one of them, where you have put your handprint on numerous people that I have loved through the years. And when I come back, it really is like a homecoming. And although I might be a new face to some of you, and some of you might be a new face to me, I know that by your being in this church, that you all are doing things well in the name of Jesus Christ. And I am so glad that that is the foundational handprint that I received after my formal schooling years. Then I got to see things put into practice. And yes, there have been incredible clergy that have done Christian education with, 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 with Barbara and with music, where we had an incredible group that was there, still have incredible music that is such a joy to come back and be a part of it. And whether it's contemporary music or classical music, it's done well but it's done to the glory of God. And that's why when I think about some of these different iterations of Christian community, there are some that are lifted up. The Apostle Paul, he spent much of his time writing letters to churches that were behaving poorly, in need of correction. But there was one church that he was particularly fond of. They were generous to the ministry. They were nurturing members of the congregation that were filled with those fruits of the Spirit that he would write about. And when I think about this church, I can only come to a place of referring to Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. I really could read this whole letter and say, this is speaking about my time at Trinity, so that I can say thank you for the invitation to come back, blessings on the next 200 years, of which none of us will be here. We'll all be together. But I'll tell you this, there's some that I wish were here, and I miss their faces, but I know one day I'll be with those saints the Lord as well. And I think this is the fruit that we've come to honor because of Jesus Christ and his good news and the mission that we continue on as we 
continue to do things well, to never be uh, caught off guard whenever there is one of those moments where we say this was truly God at work, and to know that as we are in this place of ministry, that there's going to be more to come because the Holy Spirit has been here for generations. And by looking at the fruit that this church is continuing to turn up, I know that there are many more that are going to be blessed by you. And you're wanting to honor the gospel of Jesus in his lordship in this world. Thank you. And I would love it if we can join our hearts in closing in prayer. Lord God, I'm grateful for Christian fellowship, places of joy, places of love, places of being understanding and patient, places that live life the way that you modeled it for us, places where we not only hear teachings, but we can embody it, and I pray that you would continue to anoint this church and those that are in it as they put handprints upon young students that are being shaped and the neighborhoods of Tallahassee, but also, Lord, having the handprint placed on those that will go and serve in other capacities in ministry. I thank you for the handprint that was placed on me for the blessing of my family as we started in this place, but also as we've been able to see what Christian family looks like. And may you continue to bless all of those that want to find ways in this world that continues to show the the seeds of darkness and evil at work, I pray that this would be a place of blessing and light for all that would be a part of these ministries. And so we come, dear Lord, and pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. this morning and again we as we exit we want to invite uh, Tiffany and the boys to exit with us 
and the call bells will be going downstairs to Moore Hall, so we invite all of you to come downstairs to greet them. Today has just been a wonderful day in the life of our church, and Reverend Obolinski will pronounce our benediction. <laughs> we have a benediction practice at our contemporary worship service where we end our service in three alleluias. The first alleluia we say for ourselves, knowing that we cannot go out into the world and be the hands and feet of Christ unless we ourselves are sustained. So we lift up the first alleluia as a prayer for ourselves. The second alleluia we say just a little bit louder, and we say that prayer for community, whatever makes us think of community, church, work, school, whatever makes you think of community, we lift up a prayer for them, knowing that there is a handprint that we are leaving on the world, and that is the handprint of Christ. And wherever we go and share the love of Christ, there God is. And finally, we lift up the last alleluia, loudest of all, and that's an alleluia that we lift up for all of the world, knowing that we are all a part of God's creation and we are all made in the image of God. And so I send us out now into a wonderful school year to learn as much as we can and to love as much as we can. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace. Amen. Sure. 